on the day of the race, I, w- I was driving up, I was about an hour and a half outside from where the race had started. It was like dark and windy, we woke up and obviously it was before sunrise, so it was just like, okay, well it was like pitch black, four degrees and insanely windy, like blowing a gale, like <laughs> We pulled up and it was actually, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was still freezing cold and everyone who would be like so prepared, like everyone had like really thick like winter jackets and like all the gear on and stuff like that. And I was just there in like a really lightweight raincoat. Everyone was just kind of like had their game faces on, you know, just taking it like very seriously. Yeah, it was, it started like so quickly. It was like, we were just there one minute and then the next minute it was just like the horn was going and I was like, oh shit, I guess I'm running then. It was crazy, epic. Like the first bit when we were coming over like the hill, we, we started in like the valley and then we like followed down this stream and like crossing over like rivers and stuff like that and already had like soaking wet feet. You're just like, ah, oh, fuck it, let's, let's just do it. And uh, you like come over the first hill and the sun's rising and you see like all the shadows of the runners just like stretched across the horizon. It's just like, wow, this is like, this is like crazy epic. Definitely like seeing like faces at the checkpoints was nice. Like the first couple checkpoints, like people were just offering stuff and then everyone's just like running past because they're just like, no, I've got to go, I've got to, got to keep running. And then towards the end, everyone's kind of like gradually slowing down and a bit more humble. And then you just kind of stop and you're just like, yes, just give me like some, some sugary, salty food, please, immediately. <laughs> 22 miles in, I was chatting with this guy and uh, we, were, we were just like having like a, a conversation. This dude had been doing like ultramarathons for like 14 years or something. And then before I knew it, I'd kicked a rock and, and just fell on my side and just like really like landed like super hard on my knee. And uh, I got up and I was just like pumped full of adrenaline and there was just blood pouring down my leg. And I was like, oh shit, like, you know, I didn't really care at that point. As long as I could keep running, then that was, that was what mattered. You're a bit like kind of tender at that stage anyway, but when you have like that kind of physical like bash, it kind of like shakes you a bit more mentally as well. You have to kind of remind yourself like why you're doing it. And uh, I think it, that reason like really comes out like, in those moments where it's like, it's really painful and you're like, oh shit, like, why am I doing this to myself? After that fall, I was, I just, I have like in my mind all these quotes that I can just pull out to like inspire myself. So one of those quotes is uh, one by a guy called David Goggins, which is that when the mind thinks that you're done, you're only at about 40% of what you're truly capable of. There's a lot more that we can do that we don't realize. And yeah, I just, I kept repeating that to myself, even when my body was just kind of like screaming like, no. I was running with this guy the whole time and then towards the end he started picking it up and I was like, oh, okay, I see how it's going. So I was just like, you know, we're running like six minute miles like down this hill after running like 50k. As soon as I crossed the finish line, it, I was just cooked. Even like the next day when I was like crawling up the stairs and like, dragging my like damaged knee around like a wooden stump, I was just like, ah, oh, maybe I could have gone a bit further. Like there's always that curiosity where you're just like, hmm, I wonder if that was actually my limit.